just before we begin the formal heads of agency plenary here, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Yang Wu to say a few words of uh, welcome.尊敬的女士们、先生们、各位来宾，首先我请代表中国国家航天局，特别是代表我们刚刚上任的航天节局长，祝贺二零一七年全球航天探索大会在北京隆重举行。这是中国2011年成功举办世界月球会议以来。中国宇航协会和国际宇航联合会联合主办的第二次全球系列会议，也是今年在中国主办的最重要的航天国际会议。空间探索是全人类的事业，探索浩瀚宇宙，我想也是我们呃军就是探索。这个人类未知的奥秘，是我们全人类的终极理想和追求。太空是全人类的共同财富。一九五一年，国际宇航联成立了宗旨，就是让全世界宇航界联合起来，推动和平利用太空，共享太空，使各国的平等权利。我想那个刚才啊，呃，中国国家主席习近平向大会啊发来了贺信，国家副主席李元朝现在出席今天的大会开幕式，并致辞。我想尤其也是表达了那个中国政府和中国人民啊，在勇敢探索和平利用、合作
Ito-san is head of JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. So, welcome to all. And uh, with that, let me introduce, uh, let me uh, explain to you the format. We're going to try something a little bit new that should, uh, that should be interesting today. Something that hopefully will allow you to be engaged in this uh, head of agency plenary. We're going to have some questions and we're going to have voting by you in the audience as well and then have some discussion of those topics by the heads of agencies here. So uh, the way the system works, you will use your phone or tablet that if you have one with you uh, and we'll be able to vote on a few options to questions. To demonstrate this, uh, we have a sample question uh, which should appear perhaps Uh, is it appearing already? I thought we should be able to see it here. Uh -huh. uh, this is going to be difficult because... Oh, okay, now we have to behind this as well. Uh, I think the, the format will be a little bit better for you on the side screens. So, uh, to participate as an, as an audience uh, a participant, you log on to the site Kahoot, K-A-H-O-T dot I-T, and then you enter this game pin, 8860830. Wait a moment for everyone to do that. <clears throat> Everybody, everybody is with us still? Trust me, it's going to be fun. Okay, then uh, we move to the... Oh, oh, we, oh we're count, we only have nine people that have logged in. We wait a little bit still. Just crossed 100 people signed in. Just to wait a little bit more. I think we have a, a bit more than that in the room here. While we're waiting for the uh, last members of the audience to sign into the system, let me just uh, uh, say that this is a, a bit of an experiment. The first time we tried this format at an IAF, IAF event, uh, uh, but uh, if it's successful, I think we'll perhaps try uh, more of these uh, Kahoot. Uh, systems for, for plenaries. Uh, I also wish to thank uh, the European Space Agency who has provided some guidance to us in setting this uh, Kahoot system up and has also uh, provided the, uh, the draft of the questions that we'll be using to, uh, to guide the discussion today. And in particular, um, uh, of the ESA staff members, uh, Chiara Manfredi has been uh, instrumental in setting the system up for us. So. Thank you to Chiara and to the, the rest of the ESA staff. We can start now. Okay, so let us move to the first test question. Now let me let you know, there are only 30 seconds for you to answer the question. So choose your best answer and then move on. So the test question is very easy. Which color do you like best? And you see the, uh, the four questions uh, answers to the question, red, blue, yellow, or green. So please click on one of those. Should we not be seeing the, the graph in real time? Okay. okay, 
time is up. And there we see the majority, the highest vote goes for blue, followed by green. Very nice. Okay, now you're all fully certified and trained. Now let us move to the, uh, the real business of space agencies and space exploration. So, we've organized this uh, along uh, a few topics, and in each topic there's some questions. So the first topic is the future of space agencies. So space has fascinated humans for many years. Uh, today we've reached the point where many countries have established national space agencies, and we're now witnessing an era where uh, private industrial players are taking an ever more prominent role in space activities, but also one where the appetite of the general public for space activities is also becoming a real force. At the same time, space exploration is becoming an increasingly international endeavor. We've already seen a lot of examples of that this morning. And cooperation across borders is becoming common both for governments and industry in the space field. So, with that background context, the question is, how must and should space agencies evolve? So, the first, the first question, oh, it's already been put up. What do you think is the best development of space agencies? So this is, you personally, what do you think is the best uh, path for space agency development? Should it be national, continental? Should there be an alliance of space agencies or should there be a global space agency? Okay, time's up and it looks like everybody voted. We have... Uh, by uh, quite a dominant amount, the, uh, the vote that you think the best development in the audience for space agencies is a global space agency. Uh, and uh, Alliance of Space Agencies in second place and then far behind uh, national or continental space agencies. So that's interesting. We'll keep that in mind and we'll let our agency Representatives here comment on that momentarily, but before we do that, we'll ask a second question to the audience And that is uh, a similar question, but it's which a development of space agencies Do you see as the most probable? So not what you what you think will be the best, but which you think is the most probable The same answers national continental alliance of space agencies and global Usually what I see is that the intention of people is, yes, to have a, 
global space agency or an alliance of agency on a global basis. This is my experience when we ask the question in different parts of the world. But always, usually, at the same time, people are saying, but we do not expect it to happen. Meaning that the people, and here you are different, so this is very interesting. You also say, if you see 76 and 94, which is 100, uh, 160 out of you, are saying, you believe, or even 170, you believe that this is uh, really, will happen, that we will have a global space agency. So let's look into that, uh, how, how can we, and when can we do it? But I'm really surprised about the result. And your comment on the likelihood of a global space agency? So I think we, we uh, from the European perspective, we know what happened. Uh, we had, when uh, ESA was formulated and created in 1975, the fathers of the mothers of ESA said, let's have one European space agency which should be responsible for all European space programs. Right now, we have, we have ESA, but we have at the same time the national space agencies, and we are working together. So uh, there is not that uh, the space agent, national space agencies uh, uh, were, were demolished or destroyed, not at all. It's the opposite happened. So we have more and more so national space agencies. But of course, they are working together in ESA, so something like, uh, like an uh, alliance uh, is happening. So, uh, perhaps not surprising being an agency representing many countries, you're open to the idea of increasing uh, towards a global agency. Let me ask some of the other uh, heads of the national agencies here of your views, please. You can ask. Um, I mean, I think the, the questions used uh, for these particular interviews are very sim simple by definition, but maybe we should be an argument in a little bit of a different way. I think there is no discussion that there is a global goals, but uh, the, get, the way to get there is based on the existing uh, agencies. Now you can get different level organization, continental one, international bodies, global meetings, but uh, the basic of that, uh, it's something very similar to what is the, the climate discussion. The climate discussion, you need all the country to work together to get a certain result. In this particular case, getting into space for global goals, you need the various countries to work together to set up the needed organizational structure and the resources for that. So I think it's, it's simply unrealistic to think that the national agencies, which are the basis for the uh, continental one, which are the basis for a global approach, uh, uh, will not play a role. They will play a role because the governments, until there are governments, local uh, agencies will play the role, but the important thing is to get global goals. This is why the organization of meeting like that and the defining what to do, where to do, where to go, and how to do it uh, is so important. Thank you. Uh, very good point there. Uh, even ESA as member states that have national agencies, and so there's nothing to prevent national agencies from working together on global programs. Uh, I think a good point. We had uh, uh, Mr. Monsami and uh, Mr. Lange. Thank you. I don't believe there's one particular answer to the question. If you take it from a developing country's perspective, I believe it's a natural evolution. We're going to start with the national debate in terms of building that people. National level. And then when you take it to the continental level, you have common challenges and interests that you have to address in the collective. <coughs> and then there's a fine divide between alliances and global. Alliances I see kind of driven politically, whereas global is looking at global common interests. So from a developing country's perspective, you've got to start with national moving to continental. And I think many countries that were way ahead, probably at the alliance and global scale, would be you're drawing a distinction between alliances and global, really, alliances being politically driven, but global being at some level above that. Yeah. Yeah. Shortly, may I shortly interact just to say, because you said starting with national, I can tell you that in ESA, uh, of course, the strong, the biggest member states, they, they started from their, from their point. But the other ones are now really through ESA developed. So the smaller ones are developed through ESA without having any 
space activity of course. So it's also the other way which is possible. It's in both directions it's possible. Except in Africa we don't have an ESA. <laughs> we are ready. <laughs> to add that uh, it clearly shows, I think, the answer that SpaceX... I think you have to speak close to the microphone. That space exploration certainly is a, a global challenge. And I think if it's a global space agency or a global coordination forum, I think the, the jury is still out on that one. But I think keeping in mind that the decisions are still taken by national governments, the funding comes from national governments, there's most probably a bridge we have to find between where the money comes from and from global directions. CSA sitting as a national agency here, but also being part of ESA, the suites uh, certainly see the benefits of uh, both approaches. Yeah, I guess the key point there is too, when you're representing budgets that come from national sources, it needs to be taken into account as well. Thank you. Uh, Pascal, please. Well, I have to say, I'm, um, I think I'm not surprised about the result because I think we're talking about space exploration. And space exploration is really something, you know, which we uh, probably see in a, in a, in a global context. Uh, but coming back to, uh, to national interests, uh, I'm the head of a very large uh, space agency and research center. And I think it is important to have um, a uh, base and uh, national activities in order to strengthen industry, to strengthen also small, medium enterprises and even startups. And for, the, for this, you need a national program and you need uh, to um, uh, strengthen expertise and uh, make them compatible. Uh, and uh, but this is something which really should uh, be done in big coordination with our alliances, like we have it in Europe, with the European Space Agency. So I think the interest is here. Uh, the alliance for us, of course, is on the European level and obviously also on the international level. And I think um, uh, you, you mentioned also industry and commercial, how, how should we interact? Um, I think uh, the commercial activities are getting more and more um, interesting, more and more advanced, and I think every space agency in the world has to uh, uh, to include uh, this kind of uh, stakeholder in uh, the future programs, and this on national and European and international level, and I think it is a global activity how we engage the public because it is the public which will actually secure sustainability for a global program as it has been voted everywhere. And this I think we can do best together because if everybody comes with very different messages, uh, I think we will not make uh, a, a space exploration sustainable. Thank you. Uh, interesting point you raised there about the relationship between commercial and industry and agencies uh, and we'll get to that topic a little bit later this morning but uh, in Europe especially we see a, a consolidation of industry and those companies being really international whereas historically we had national space companies they're becoming international so moving a bit in this trend of, of uh, international cooperation as well uh, any any other thoughts from other panelists Mr. Ito. Yeah. Uh, historically, the space activities are uh, uh, developed by the people's fundamental desire to know more about uh, going further beyond. So, in that sense, uh, the first question uh, answers the first question. And also a little bit uh, surprised at the answers of the second question. Well, because the uh, expanded fields of activity are related to the <coughs> economy and the diplomacy. <laughs> so uh, it is, uh, we have some difficulties uh, in practical sense. But uh, like uh, we are gathered here today, uh, if we can share the value of exploring the uh, 
scientific and uh, activities frontier. Uh, and at the same time, uh, building the mutual confidence uh, direction uh, for the international level uh, space agency is uh, worth discussing. So, again, uh, I appreciate the organizers of this conference. Thank you. Uh, I've just been told we should try and speak close to the microphones. It projects better. Uh, Mr. Wu, I think you had something to say. Uh, 团结起来共同探索浩瀚能够加强合作习近平主席、李元朝副主席、贺一清和支持二两都表达了这个观点。我们在深空探测领域，啊，致力于国际合作，致力于向相关的成果造福于人类。Thank you. Thank you. I think we were. Hearing a pretty consistent uh, message from the heads of agencies, uh, uh, Mr. Legal, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, I know France has uh, traditionally had a very strong national space program. You, you lead the National Space Agency. France also participates in the European Space Agency. Um, do you think there's an openness in France to uh, potentially participate in the Global Space Agency? No, I agree with what I said, uh, we have an organization which is as uh, Matryoshka, Russian governments, uh, with uh, national agencies, uh, regional agencies, and world agencies. And uh, there are today uh, huge projects of uh, exploration starting with the International Space Station uh, and uh, many other projects in the future. And I am sure that there's uh, huge projects of exploration uh, to go to the moon and beyond the moon uh, would be on the basis of the global exploration and probably uh, exploration, uh, cooperation associated uh, all the space countries of the world. And uh, from this point of view, I am sure that uh, the IIF will be, will be key uh, in organizing the dialogue between uh, all uh, the space agencies uh, worldwide. A good point. Uh, the IIF that hosts the uh regular meetings of heads of agencies uh, perhaps is a good organization to lead that movement towards a potential global organization. I guess one of the advantages of, of pooling our efforts is the, uh, especially in the area of space exploration, is that the, uh, the cost of some of the endeavors that we're considering in exploration now are quite, quite large. And so working together as, a, as one world uh, certainly has advantages. Very good. So, uh, with that, uh, unless anyone has a... Oh, uh, we have one. Short that's knowledge. a very short point, because uh, I, I think uh, we are discussing about the agency pulling together national in the continental one, but in reality, I think nobody is considering space can do what politics cannot. I mean, uh, clearly there are areas where by themselves are continental, United States, China, I India to, to mention a few by definition is a large uh, political st 
infrastructure, which has an agency, which by themselves is equivalent or even exceeding the case of European Space Agency, which is the sum of many contributions of different agencies. And maybe the fact that we have only one example of uh, European Space Agency type of organization where different countries, which are independent, get together to make a larger effort, it is probably because the political process is still ongoing. So I think we should not separate the two things. Number two, I would like to, to challenge the audience uh, the following simple mathematical question. I mean, how many times uh, we did something in space? How many times we built a station? A few times. How many times uh, we went with satellite around the moon or on the moon? Several times. How many times we went on the moon with the men? Only one nation did that. How many times we went around Mars? Several times. How many times men we go to Mars? So far, no one. So this maybe is the only global endeavor which can be seen in front of us because everything else has already been done several times. So I think if we need something to be done for the first time, is where the mankind all together may have a global goal to work together. Thank you. A good point. Maybe sending men to Mars will be the, the first uh, real global effort. Good. Uh, with that, uh, Perhaps we'll, we'll move to the next topic, which is, uh, which is what uh, space agencies should, uh, should be focused on, what should be the subject of space agencies. So in our new space world today, we're operating in one that is characterized by uh, innovation, by big data, by collaborative interconnected development, and also one where we see uh, increasing private investment. The traditional value chains are being transformed through digital technologies, new business models, smart integrated services, uh, many new technologies such as artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, 3D printing even, have great potential for application in space. So it's a very, uh, it, it's a space world in flux in which we live. There are those that claim the space sector can become globally competitive only by fully integrating into society and in the economy. And for this to happen, space must be readily accessible to all, built on the foundation of excellence in science and technology. So, considering that, that world, that very rapidly evolving and developing world in which we live, uh, the question, the, the next set of questions will focus on where should space agencies focus their efforts. So uh, let us uh, get ready with your phones and laptops. You'll have 30 seconds to answer the next question from the audience. So the, the first question is, what do you think should be the tasks of space agencies in the future? Not what do you expect will happen, but what do you think should be the tasks? Should they be comprehensive, looking at everything? Should space agencies select several topics to focus on? Or should agencies focus really on one specific area, one topic? Or should space agencies uh, just disappear is the fourth, fourth option. Not everyone got a chance to answer. So I'll, I'll give you a, perhaps a little more advanced warning. Hopefully we'll get more responses the next time. So this is what you think should happen. Uh, we see the answer in blue, which is agencies should focus on, on several topics uh, and uh, followed closely by agencies should be uh, comprehensive. The, the answers that the agency should focus on a single goal or a single topic or even uh, should disappear really uh, didn't get too many votes. Although I'm surprised that uh, 10 people in the audience thought that agency should disappear. Maybe you're, maybe you're at the wrong plenary today. Um, so, we'll, we'll consider this. So the, the, 
first, the highest choice was the agency should focus on several topics. So I guess with that, we take a, a middle ground, not focused on one, not on everything, but pick a few key topics. So if that's what you think should happen. Now the next question is almost the same question, but it is, what do you expect will happen? Will, uh, what do you expect will be the tasks of space agencies in the future? So you'll have 30 seconds to answer. We'll have the same set of four answers. Should there be a, a focus on comprehensive uh, topics, on only a, several topics, or just a single topic for each agency, or should the agencies disappear? What do you think will happen? Uh, with that, okay, here we go. 30 seconds, the same answers. Comprehensive, several topics, single topic, or disappear. Good, we had quite a few more response there. So you can't fall asleep because it could be a surprise question you have to answer quickly. So we have now uh, in, in first place the, uh, the blue answer, which is several topics. So in alignment again with what you think should happen and with what you expect to happen. So perhaps that's a bit of a, a vote of confidence in how our space agencies are attacking the world. Uh, so. The answer there uh, indicates that agencies should pick several topics, but not focus on everything, try and pick the important ones uh, to focus on. Uh, so let me uh, ask our panelists to keep that in mind. We have just a couple more questions, and then we'll comment on. This is all that topic, topic of what should be the subject of space agencies. Now, uh, we turn to a question slightly differently. When we consider space agency uh, areas of focus or areas of activity, uh, and again, view that in the context of space exploration, which is what we're all here to talk about this week, what should be the most important area of activity? And I'll list them for you. You can see them on your screens already. Uh, applications, development of applications, uh, exploration and science, launchers, the rockets, the launch vehicles, or technology development. So which should be the most important area for space agency activity? Again, blue is the highest one. I hope people are not voting by their favorite color because I remember blue was also the favorite color. <laughs> so we have uh, in first place uh, the blue answer, which is exploration and science, which is good for an exploration con conference. Uh, I think we all know the importance of exploration and science. Uh, we have uh, a split between uh, technology development following and then close after the area of applications. Uh, so we'll ask for the uh, agencies to make comment on that in a moment. Uh, but we have one more question in this set of, uh, of agency direction and, and focus. And the final question is, uh, what should be the relationship between space agencies and private commercial industry? First answer is none. Agencies do their thing, commercial industry does its own thing, completely independent. Second answer is agencies design the programs and industry executes them. The third answer is industry comes up with the ideas and proposes them, agencies select which ones and funds those missions. And the third answer is that, the fourth answer is industry leads the space activities and the agency's roles are only to support industry lead. Okay, so we have almost a three-way tie here. 
So the lowest is the answer of none, which is, uh, which is I think, a vote of confidence that agencies need to be working together with industry, that the two should not be separated. And then, uh, I guess the green is a little bit ahead. Green is, oh, this is interesting. Uh, that's the answer that industry should lead space activities and the agency's role is only to enable industry to do its activities. So I'll be interested to hear the response of the agencies to that. But uh, close after that we have uh, uh, the, the two middle options which is the agency design programs and industry follows the lead and executes them and the other being industry proposes ideas to their agencies and agencies then select and fund uh, the best ideas. So, those are the uh, views of the audience. Uh, let's now turn to our heads of agency. So just briefly summarizing uh, both the questions of what do you think agencies should do in the future and what do you expect. The uh, audience uh, thought for both of those that uh, several topics is what agencies should be looking at. What do you think should be the most important activity uh, exploration and science was dominant, perhaps not surprising from this audience. And then we, the final question uh, had uh, the relationship, focused on the relationship between agency and industry. And the greatest votes came for industry lead space activities, agencies only enable them. And uh, close behind though we had a collaborative approach where agencies design programs industry executes or industry proposes and agencies uh, uh, select. So with, with that feeling of the audience, can I ask for comments of the heads of agencies? Yeah, please. I think these answers very much fit to each other. So it, it's for me very logic the results because what we are facing is that the roles of space agencies <laughs> is changing. The roles are changing. We have more than one role. In the past, the space agencies were just the funding agencies and then doing the, the management of each and every project. And now with uh, other actors in space, especially industry, these roles are changing. So we are more and more for many areas, we are enablers, we are facilitators, also brokers on an international scheme. And if you look now to the results, saying comprehensive, this was one uh, number, meaning that it is expected that the space agency really can cover different fields. At the same time, you said they should focus on exploration and science, which is not, not at all a contradiction, because as an enabler for industry, for instance, maybe exploration is not the main subject, but the applications. So therefore, for me, it's very logic, so the space agencies should be enabler, facilitators for industry for a lot of different activities, maybe also for other entities, for national entities. At the same time, space exploration might be something which is really uh, more or less a focus of the funding that the space agencies are directly doing. So for me, these three aspects, uh, comprehensive exploration and enabler, that for me fits very good to each other. Thank you. Any uh, other views? Uh, Pascal? Yeah, I, so I have uh, uh, speak of course of, um, of, uh, about DLR and the large space agency and uh, we of course have a space strategy of the German government and that space strategy is of obviously updated every few years according to developments uh, and of the space sector. And in that sense, I think um, we uh, follow as a, as a space agency um, also developments and updates and changes in the space sector uh, over the years. And I think um, uh, when I look at the second topic where um, it was discussed about application space science and uh, tech development, obviously we are in a conference of space exploration and I would imagine that everybody votes for space exploration and science because it's the topic of the conference. It might be different when we are going uh, to, to another conference. So, um, uh, I think uh, when we look at the German uh, space strategy, uh, applications are very important, but so are other topics. And obviously, it is also reflecting, you know, the expertise and the competitiveness of the national industry. 
and um, also uh, the science community and also what it means for an economy of a national country. And I think these are things which uh, are important when you develop uh, a space agency program and uh, they have a meaning in particular also if you invest uh, a lot of money. And uh, concerning the, the change, I think the change is uh, I think happening in every space agency in some sense and we are also changing together with ESA, you know, uh, here in, in Europe and probably also international. And I think the, the, um, what I said before, that um, we are now um, uh, entering a phase, you know, where commercial uh, space activities are quite dominant. Um, every country has to do uh, its measures and uh, look at, um, in, uh, I think, help and support uh, companies uh, in the market uptake of ideas of space data and include non-space actors and we are doing that very efficiently at the uh, German Space Agency uh, where we are trying to bring people into space activities which come from very different fields and I think this is something which uh, I think uh, happens in every country uh, in a certain way. We, we uh, uh, do a lot of activities in this sector and I think this change uh, which you see, we are, we are actually doing it also on national level together on, on, on European level and obviously it might be different for smaller space agencies but I think it is important uh, that we move all together in a new direction. Thank you. I, I think your, your point about bringing in the non-space actors is uh, quite important. We've seen that happening in Earth observation and telecommunications but in this area of science and exploration that we're talking about, we see uh, an increasing appetite for the public, and I think bringing in other new players into that into that field that was reserved for just a few elite in the past is quite important. But you see, um, that, just a comment, Earth observation, application, of course, this is mainly driven also by industry, so therefore, there you see the difference, uh, which might be also seen over here. So we, we tested this question in totally different environments, it's always exploration. Even at the launcher conference, they go for exploration? Even at the launcher conference, yes. I'm happy to hear that. So, uh, uh, Roberto, please. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I would like to focus for a, for a moment on these 10 people in the room who said uh, that the agency should vanish, should go away. Uh, I think it was not a mistake, because in a sense, if we can understand that the changes which are going on with the private sector are bringing in new actors, not in every country, but in certain countries, which are very uh, forcefully giving direction, developing technologies, uh, designing dreams. Okay? So as an agency, I think uh, we must tackle with that. We must uh, understand what is going on, and in a very, very diversified manner in different countries, uh, but uh, the private sector will have uh, more and more to say and in certain situations already is saying a lot. So maybe in these uh, 10 people who said that the agencies will vanish, should vanish, there is this kind of thinking that there is a capability for the private sector uh, under certain conditions, uh, not, not the same everywhere, which could develop important strategies for space alone. Having said that, this is not what's going to happen tomorrow, it's happening, I repeat, in a very diversified manner, and on general scale, agencies will keep their role. They will keep a multi-topic type of research. It will support exploration and, 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 uh, and science. So all of what has been voted in is, is reasonable. I'm very surprised, to be honest, to see industries leading the decision-making process uh, because this is really kind of against uh, what has been done so far. Industries are playing a fundamentally important role, but until the money is public money invested in these large enterprises, I think the agencies will have a say as public and taxpayer and government is concerned to say what to do with this money. Okay? But, so, but it was, uh, I would like to, to stimulate the discussion more about this uh, scheme that in certain conditions, in certain places, in certain topics, uh, agencies may fade away unless they are radically changing the way they deal with the private sector. 
Thank you. What one interesting thing, though, is we see uh, private industry sometimes investing its own money, not even just interested in spending the public money. And I think that's changing a little bit the conversations we're seeing in the space world. But uh, some good points there. Uh, let me uh, turn over to uh, Mr. Monsani, please. Thanks. Uh, I'm certainly hoping that space agencies will still be around, otherwise we won't be sitting here the next time around. Uh, just, uh, there was three parts to your question. So the first is in terms of the focus. I certainly believe it should not be comprehensive because it's a very expensive business. And you cannot afford to spread yourself down. Neither can you focus on a single area, a particular area, that you limit yourself. So you've got to be strategic and choose niche areas. So there's several topics that you need to focus on. But you've got to match it with regards to your national skills base and what you can do and can't. Then in terms of the focus areas, I think we need to remind ourselves as to why agencies are set up in the first place. It's a political process and you have to convince your political principles as to the value, the socio-economic value of space. And from addressing national challenges, obviously the application is very important. And then when you're trying to promote industry, so there's two things that all governments are concerned with. The economic, uh, sustaining the economic growth and improving the quality of life. So in terms of the economic aspects, it's about the industry development. And so I think the exploration and the technology development is a key aspect to the economic aspect. Coming back to the very first question around the global issue, um, you put launches, which is a very interesting uh, option. If you have 190 nation states that are, have space aspirations, you cannot accept, expect that 190 countries will build launch capabilities. So in the context of global exploration, we need to look at access to space, even to countries that don't have launch capabilities. And I think that's a conversation. Then with regards to the relationship between the agencies and the industry, I think it's somewhere between uh, agencies designing and industry executing and industry proposing and agencies selecting and funding. Uh, so the agencies are essentially set up to look at the user requirements, the sort of user pull, whereas the industry is looking at it mainly from a technology push perspective. And you have to balance the risk aspect, which is where the agencies sit from the public sector domain versus where the industry sits in terms of trying to be innovative. And you've got to find the fine balance. I think you need both projects. Thank you. Uh, your, your point of the importance of focusing on niche areas for some of the smaller players, I think, is a, is a good one, a valid one. Uh, I know the Canadian Space Agency also seems to choose certain niche areas. And I think in the global context, as you said, we can't have the 190 different launch vehicles. Uh, make sense as a, as, a, as, a, as a world to have that. Uh, let us turn um, Mr. Wu and Mr. Wu and then uh, Mr. Legoff.
作为重要牵引，来啊为我们工程和科学提出命题，来作为我们引导的一个动力，作为我们行业规划的啊一个重要牵引。所以我们提出来叫“一体两翼”，要全面发展，也就是说，通过科技和。应用产业的推动，来带动行业的技术和工程的发展。那这个这个这个，哎，关于哎第一个问题，第二个问题就关于这个这个国家的这个航天局啊，啊，怎么就是与我们工业界和私营企业这个关系？呃，我想这可能也和不同国家的呃情况应该有差异。照我理解，说国家航天局啊，啊，应该做好这几个方面的事。一个要代表，就是本国的业界，要做好相应的发展规划。第二个呢，我想这个特别是要制定相关的政策，比如说我们是不是鼓励私营企业搞商业航天？这每个国家是要有政策的牵引。第三一个呢，也是我们今天这个大会的主题。我们国家航天局和各国的航天局要致力于啊，各国航天局之间的合作，各国航天界的要起到这个国际合作的啊这个这个这个加强推动作用。我想这个呃，总之吧，我想这个如果。国家的航天的这个科技和工业到了一定的阶段，那我想有一些航天活动交给企业为主，去主导去实施是可行的。就像呃这几年商业航天的进步一样。China, in, in many ways, is a model for a well-integrated space agency and industry working together. Your, uh, your stated openness to collaborating with other agencies, I think, is important in the world today. And I think that the message has been heard earlier today, already this morning. And thank you for reinforcing that. Uh, I think we we seem to have some consensus of the importance of working together uh, globally. The, Space exploration area. Uh, let me turn to Tony uh, Begal and then uh, So thank you. Perhaps uh, two comments. <coughs> the first one, uh, when uh, we say that uh, space is more and more commercial, I would like uh, to uh, clarify that uh, that's true that space is more and more commercial, but commercial with uh, public money. Because, uh, in fact, uh, what uh, we are seeing today is uh, the fact that commercial companies take uh, more responsibilities, but most of the big programs are still funded by uh, the government. This is the first point. And uh, the fact that uh, uh, these programs are managed with a commercial approach made uh, probably uh, the system more efficient, even if it is still to be demonstrated, but uh, this is uh, the global idea to say that uh, if you apply to uh, spending of public money the methods which are used for commercial companies, it will be more efficient. This is the first point. The second point about uh, the question of the future of space agencies, it is clear that uh, since uh, we are speaking about a system which is mostly funded by public money, we still need agencies to manage the use of this public money. As it has been said by Pascal, uh, in fact, uh, you will never find an industry to explain that uh, we need the programs to develop innovation, we need programs to tackle climate change, we need programs to, uh, for the exploration, and I am sure that only agencies can build a kind of roadmap, of course, discussing with the industry, discussing with uh, the uh, governments, but uh, in my opinion, only space agencies 
can uh, bridge the gap between the governments with the ambitions of the government and uh, industry with the ambition of the industry, which is basically to make money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, not only in, in space, but in general, the role of the National Research and Development Agency or institutions that take on the R&D and crucial fields uh, that is too risky for the private sector. Another basic and ongoing problem is uh, to acquire new scientific knowledge. That, that has been the basic uh, understanding. But the, uh, as everybody discusses, uh, the situation is uh, changing. And the, considering the, those general principles, uh, the simple uh, satellite development or the simple uh, experimental launches, uh, they are uh, going to be uh, shifted private sector and it is happening and uh, it has already happened, happened and happened. <coughs> and the space exploration uh, beyond the low earth orbit is a good candidate uh, as well as the scientific activities for the future main role of the space agencies. Uh, that's a uh, basic and the reality uh, in Japanese cases, uh, the basic law in the, uh, in the uh, space policy, plan for the space policy, uh, by the three goals and the three goals and the and define the JAXA's activity. And also, one of the RMB organizations. <laughs> Uh, every uh, of the institutions are requested to uh, more interact, cooperate with other agencies in order to solve the societal issues. So uh, that's the changing and the space agency's role, JAXA's role is changing. But still, the whole part remains for that um, I, I, I think discussing. And the, from that point of view, uh, the result of uh, um, the enquête is understandable and a little bit Not surprising. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on that uh, set of questions? Maybe I can cut at one thing. I think this function of enabler, we have to see that the agencies, and uh, this was mentioned here, of course, by all, so far the agencies were more or less working uh, towards the national government or towards the government. So this was their main task. So they had, so to say, only one customer, their country, or in our case, ESA 22 countries plus uh, Slovenia plus Canada. But can we also imagine that in the future that other customers come and ask space agencies to perform something? For instance, industry as was mentioned. We have the experience that when we have our incubators, the small and medium and small entrepreneurs, they are coming not in asking for money at the first day, they are asking to have access to our data, or they, they are asking to have access to our relations to other countries. So that means that we have different types of customers in the future, not only governments, but also industry, etc. So I think really that the space agencies have an opportunity, and I'm, I'm totally convinced, as you said also, 
we need the space agencies in the future for a special uh, task and we can even use it for other tasks as well. So I think there is a positive way in that direction so that I don't think that we will disappear. Thank you. Good. Let us uh, turn our focus now to exploration priorities. So, uh, historically, exploration has focused on low Earth orbit. It's where uh, our astronauts go now. Uh, Tychonauts, uh, we met one earlier this morning, the cosmonauts, the spasionauts, all our human explorers go to low Earth orbit. Uh, the uh, moon is another potential destination, and uh, I see Buzz Aldrin here uh, in the front. Uh, we've had humans on the moon. It's been a little while, but uh, it will come again. Uh, we've had the, uh, the vision by many that uh, moon colonies or a moon village, a vision that the European Space Agency has put forward, exists as well. Uh, others say Mars is the, is the end goal. We should be looking for human missions to Mars are the big thing to be achieved. Uh, others say, better than Mars, let's go to a moon of Mars, Phobos, for example, as a, something that makes more sense for human exploration. Uh, and, and let me just uh, round out the, the background to these set of questions in that uh, uh, it's not just agencies, space agencies, that are engaging in this discussion now. We see increasingly private industry giving uh, voices. At the IF Congress uh, six months ago, we had Elon Musk representing SpaceX saying how SpaceX was going to build spaceships to take humans to Mars. Private industry uh, sharing that vision with us. Uh, more recently, SpaceX has announced that they'll be sending humans to the moon, orbiting the moon, uh, again as a private initiative, a private industry initiative. Uh, Quite recently, we had uh, uh, Mr. Bezos, who, who leads Blue Origin and Amazon, saying that uh, Amazon will be delivering, as they deliver packages around the world, they'll be delivering packages to the surface of the moon. So we see industry engaging in that discussion of destinations as well. So now, uh, we turn to you, the audience, uh, to share with us uh, what your thoughts are. So we have... Uh, three questions that will come up on uh, choice of destinations. The first will be, what is your preferred destination? The second will, for human exploration, human space exploration. The other is, what do you think will be the destination that our space agencies will be focusing on? Oh, okay, they've already started with the first question. Please, the first is, what is your personal preferred destination for human exploration? So we have low Earth orbit, moon, Mars, or Phobos, a Martian moon, Phobos. Okay. We see uh, in first place, Mars. <coughs> So we've just, the, yeah. Can you make sure the, the screen is not being blocked? Uh, is it okay? All right. Uh, so the results, we see the audience prefers Mars. Uh, with the highest number of votes coming from Mars as the preferred destination for human exploration. Uh, followed by the moon, uh, Phobos, and then uh, lower Earth orbit in last place. And perhaps, I don't know, Phobos and Mars sort of perhaps grouped together, which adds perhaps even a more dominance to Mars as a destination for human exploration. So this, the, we're going to ask two more questions. One is what you think the agencies are going to do and what you think uh, industry will be uh, considering as a target. So for next question is, what do you think will be the destination which is mainly considered by space agencies? Same answers. Low Earth orbit, Moon, Mars, and 
Phobos are your answer options. Considered by private industry, Earth orbit, Moon, Mars, or Phobos. Same four options.
but uh, at the same time, uh, member of the ISEC G, uh, we have been discussing the mask for the horizon. So, we do have to try in the future. Thank you. I, mean, I found these uh, results quite uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, I think this is really the, the core, these last few questions are really at the, at the core of the discussion which I have with, with, with uh, today, this audience, uh, and is very much related to many other questions which were coming before. So, where to go, which is the priority, and so on and so forth. So, if I try to interpret uh, the, the answer to this question, is that the dream is clearly set. The dream is the new uh, challenge, the, 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 the new first. Uh, I mean, I think everybody sharing that. Even agencies are considered to be sharing that uh, by the audience. Meaning that the audience is feeling uh, consistency between their dreams and what the agency should uh, interpret for the dreams. What the audience interpret in different way what the industry would like to do. In, a, in this particular case, if we're discussing that the industry will be providing the advanced technologies, and this particular as we got to lower orbit of the moon is instead a kind of uh, lower business as usual, repeating things which have been done. It's also quite an interesting expectation by the audience. Um, but uh, okay, maybe this is just the result of a, of a poll. It's not representative, but to the extent these numbers are to be taken with some value, I think this is quite an interesting uh, uh, set of the direction to go. Uh, I have a very clear uh, point uh, about where to go. I mean, everybody realized, was mentioned just a minute ago, uh, what has been the power of the Apollo program in the United States. To set for a goal which was considered almost unreachable, a suitable amount of resources, a short amount of time, with a lot of risk has been done because it was set as a goal. And this was, was done uh, 50 years ago or so, and the technology was uh, nothing to compare with what we have today as technology. Well. And if we now look to the development of technology, in particular disruptive technologies, uh, microelectronics, uh, IT software, and so on, has grown so quickly that uh, we as agencies, as space world, space time, we better cope with that, use that to set a goal which can surprise us uh, as we, we get there, because the technologies are really exponentially developing. So we don't want to have a goal which is too late with respect to what is happening on the earth. We should take the opportunities the technologies that technologies provide us in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years. Sometimes we don't even know how much this evolution will be fast and set a goal which is comparable to that. In this sense, we have to really aim the highest possible goal and do it together because in my mind, setting this goal it's like setting the Apollo for the United States, but this particular time is a global goal for humankind. All the discussion, doing together, global agencies, a set of agencies working together, are, 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 are very interesting if we have a really ambitious goal, otherwise it's not. And to make, it, to make an example which is uh, very effective, very, very, very synthetic, I think many of you have seen uh, this uh, uh, movie, passengers, okay, and think how the, the spacecraft was built. The spacecraft can repair itself all the time. It's protecting mankind that traveling to the faraway star. We do not have this kind of technologies. Today we are exposed to technologies which break up and don't repair themselves. So until we have this kind of limited technologies, we don't go really safe anywhere in the universe, not even to the moon or to the moon of Mars or to Mars. We need a really big step up in reliability, self-repairing, in new materials, understanding how body, how you react to lack of gravity and things like that. And, uh, but I'm very hopeful, hopeful that this will be solved in the next few years, not because of space, but because
because of the revolution which is about to emerge, the space can grasp that and use that to set the okay, very ambitious goal. Thank you. So, visionary goals, you side personally with humans to Mars as a, among the options here as the visionary goal. Thank you. Um, Jan and then John Eve. Jan, I'm interested to hear your view because you're an advocate for the moon. But I'm an advocate for the moon and I stay also with it. Also, I believe and be very clear, I think humans should go to Mars, of course. They will do that, but um, I have the my opinion is this will not happen within the next 10 years and uh, Roberto, yes, you, uh, I can agree that um, the Apollo program, the, uh, Mercury, Germany and Apollo was really in a different situation than we are today. However, it, was, it took them also more than 10 years finally to reach the goal. And if we have a goal which is too far away, we might a little bit uh, lose in between the inspiration. So therefore, yes, I believe Humans should go to Mars, but I still believe that the uh, moon is a very good stepping stone or your test bed or pit stop, or however you could call it, um, and to also try to, uh, for instance, when we go to Mars, we should not bring all the stuff to Mars. We should use the Mars material to build something over there. We should not have just one mission to go to Mars and come back but we should have then also something which uh, is a sustainable surface operations for different purposes of science, exploration, etc. And I think really that the moon is close enough to test and develop all of these technologies as a step like Mercury and Germany to go with Apollo to the moon. I think similar to go to the, to the moon first with uh, industry and uh, public entities, with robotics as well as with astronauts is a very good uh, test case to then go on um, uh, deeper into our solar system. Mr. Wu, please.
我想第二个就是刚才说私营企业就是啊，特别是企业是要盈利的。我们在低空把这一些成果应用到生物、医学、材料、太空运动。这个各个行业可以加快转换应用，可以形成产业，可以比如说啊，因为人类这个啊这个生物啊，我我想尤其也是为企业的是有回报。我们的广播电台，我们的广播电台，我们的广播电台，我们的广播电台，About uh, the objectives, uh, I think that uh, we have to be uh, very ambitious because the technology is developing uh, faster and faster. And uh, I always uh, thought that uh, I visited 30 years ago a kind of uh, lab of the future with uh, the products which uh, are thought to be uh, existing uh, now. And 30 years later, and uh, I can tell you that uh, what I saw 30 years ago was very, very impressive, but it is completely under the reality because the technology is developing very, very, very quickly. For instance, uh, at this time, it was the beginning of the disc man. I am sure that uh, most of you, you do not know what it is, but uh, in the past, uh, if you want to listen to music, uh, we used to, 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 we used to use uh, CD players. And now the music is online, but nobody could imagine that. And I am sure that uh, for space missions it's the same. And we must be very, very ambitious and to think about things which is, which are very, very difficult to reach today. But uh, I am sure that this is the only way to keep a momentum, to keep budgets because we need budgets, and uh, at the end of the day to develop a real space policy. Thank you. Um, we have just a short comment from uh, Madame Erafant. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, from, from the German point of view, uh, uh, it is clear that uh, for us, uh, the first destination for, um, for crude space flight is uh, the ISS and is the low Earth orbit. And um, I am quite interested that the, the result um, was for industry that this is where they will focus. I think this is a wish of the audience. I hope it's also actually uh, then translated in activities of the industry really doing that. So we would really like to continue uh, uh, this kind of activities in low Earth orbit. We have a large research community that when the ISS uh, is uh, once over, that private uh, um, sector is taking over, or we can work with collaborators, like for instance uh, with China, on this type of research. And number two is certainly the moon, um, uh, where uh, I think we mixed a little bit robotic and human exploration right now in this panel. Uh, but um, uh, you have always to think how you actually address politicians and having a very, very long time goal, like bringing humans to Mars, is very, very difficult in order to uh, raise uh, really funding for space exploration. And it is very important that we do things in steps, and that the moon is one of the important steps on our way to Mars. Thank you. Any other very brief last comments? Uh, Christian and uh, Mr. Vito. Maybe a very good one from the Canadian perspective. Canada, as you might know, is the second largest country, but the space budget unfortunately is not. So for us, the, the question of destination actually is less of significance. It's more where we can make a valuable and significant contribution for to push science, technology, and innovation benefits for, for Canadians and humanity. So I think we are supporting the ISAG and other international fora to define the vision that uh, in a way the destination is not the main objective. Thank you. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. And uh, in Israel, it is expected uh, that the uh, government policy level dialogues uh, should also be further deepened. And uh, Japan has the privilege of the hosting of the second International Space Exploration Forum, ICF2, and coming March in Tokyo. So uh, please uh, join us. 
Thank you. Uh, so uh, with that, we, we conclude the discussion here. If you'll permit me another minute, I'll summarize what uh, I think uh, the key points that we've heard here. Uh, we began with the look at the topic of the future of space agencies. And uh, the audience was pretty clear that they thought that space agencies should evolve to be a one global space agency. Uh, we then had discussion among the agency representatives here, and they, uh, I think there was consensus that the globalization of space efforts is a good thing, but that one had to bear in mind that working together internationally, globally, doesn't mean that national uh, agencies go away, and that agencies uh, uh, could cooperate uh, together to achieve those uh, global goals. Uh, then we discussed the topic of uh, what space agencies should be focusing on, especially in the area of space exploration. And uh, we, uh, we had some, uh, I think, uh, relatively balanced views coming uh, with uh, exploration and science, of course, being a high priority for, for everyone here. Uh, we also discussed the relationship between agencies and industry, and there was a quite some discussion there. We had the majority of the audience that felt that industry should lead space activities and the agency's role should be only to enable. Uh, I think then when the agency representatives here discussed this, uh, there was an agreement that it was important to collaborate with industry, that this was an increasing importance, but that agencies were had other responsibilities, including to ensure that public funds were being well spent that this wasn't something that industry could do alone and so that, that that collaboration was quite important as well we heard a bit about the importance of uh, uh, that agencies play when they can take risks that private industry whose role it is to make money uh, perhaps can't always take those risks of early developments and then the final topic uh, we had was uh, destinations and uh, we had the audience express a very clear view that their preference was for human exploration to focus on Mars. Uh, and that's what they thought the agencies uh, should do. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the agency discussion, I think, uh, uh, pointed in a similar direction. The importance of dreams. Mars is a dream. The dream should be first. The dream is important. But we had also some voices uh, cautioning us that choosing a dream that's too far uh, it's sometimes detrimental and having a, a step along the way is important and so the moon on the way to Mars seemed to be uh, evolving as, a, as an output there with some comments that low Earth orbit is quite important especially from, it, for it, from an industry point of view and uh, I needed to be kept in mind as well. So with that brief summary uh, let me uh, thank uh, at the organizers who put together the questions and the, uh, the technical system here. Let me thank our panelists, the uh, heads of the agencies here. Thank you very much for this. And, and finally, let me thank you, the audience, for your active participation in the, in the discussion as well. Thank you. <laughs> 我八十一岁高龄的阿玛斯的航天的正月的阿拉西亚我们中国在文航天飞天的第一的杨明伟先生还有我们刚才这个蔡公讲的女的阿拉阿多斯亚的女的讲的我想我们在我们航天局长邀